Welcome back. I'm Ann Petrie. Well, skeptics said they'd believe it when they saw it, but it finally happened a year ago today. The first oil flowed from Hibernia. Nearly 20 years after the reservoir was first discovered, the offshore project was fraught with problems right from the start. Development required billions of dollars. Financial shortfalls and investor indecision caused frustration and delays. But then November 17, 1997 arrived, and it marked a brand new industry for Newfoundland and Labrador. Carl Wells is with CBC St. John's. He's in the galley on the Hibernia platform for this first, in, for this first anniversary. And before I even say hello to Carl, I want to warn you that the picture isn't as clear as we'd like because we're bringing in the signal from the Hibernia platform through a high-tech phone line. So, Carl, move around for us and show us how funny the pictures get. <laughs> Hi, Ann. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Carl. There's also... Hello from Hibernia. Well, I should also warn people there's quite a delay on the, on the phone line that we've got, but tell us what the first anniversary is like. I see flags up there. Are they celebrating? Well, actually, I'm uh, speaking to you from the dining room on the Hibernia platform, Ann, and they had quite a celebration here. Yes, they had a marvelous dinner. The food on this platform is really something special. They've got uh, some wonderful chefs working here. And uh, they had a special uh, first oil anniversary dinner, and they celebrated with uh, jumbo shrimp, smoked salmon, uh, Caesar salad, carved hip of beef, pork, shrimp and scallop, Petrozzini, and it goes on and on. And uh, for dessert, uh, strawberry mousse cake, Swiss roll, and fruit flan. <laughs> so they really laid on a special uh, buffet for the first oil anniversary. And it was, I think, uh, at about 1.45 p.m. Uh, on this day, uh, one year ago, that the first oil flowed from Hibernia. Well, tell us a bit about what life on Hibernia is like. Presumably, uh, the workers don't go home at 5 o'clock every night. They're out there for a while. They are, actually. They're out here for a uh, uh, work period of about 21 days, and uh, then they get 21 days off. Uh, and sometimes uh, they have to work a little bit longer than 21 days because it's quite foggy on the Grand Banks. Actually, uh, in the Guinness Book of World Records, this is the foggiest place on Earth, I think. So uh, they work for uh, 21 days. It's uh, a work shift of about uh, 12 hours. Uh, so they do a lot of work here. And, uh, of course, uh, when they're not working, they, uh, they have to rest up. And uh, there's quite a few good facilities here. They have a marvelous uh, recreation area. They've got pool tables. They have a very well-equipped gym. As a matter of fact, one of the best-equipped gyms I've ever seen every piece of equipment you'd want there. Uh, but they're in good spirits here. Uh, they, they love their work. They're uh, extremely professional about their work. And, uh, you know, uh, once their 21-day stretch is up, they get to go home and uh, be with their families. But, you know, while they're out there, Carl, I mean, this is not a place where you can actually take a walk in the country or something like that. Can they go outside at all? Or are they always, you know, inside when they're not working? Well, no, you can go outside, as a matter of fact. Uh, now, you're really exposed to the elements here. We were outside yesterday, and, uh, you know, you had to hold on to your construction hat because the wind was so high. Uh, and today, the uh, seas here were very high. But uh, you can go out and, uh, and take a walk around uh, uh, the decks here. Uh, you have to be properly dressed for it, uh, of course. And uh, there's a major concern about safety here. They're very concerned about the fire hazard. As a matter of fact, before you fly out here, uh, you're told you're not allowed to take cigarette lighters or matches or any piece of electronic equipment that might spark. Uh, equipment that you bring here has to be what they call intrinsically safe, meaning uh, if, if there is a spark, it has to be contained within the device itself. What are the quarters like? Does each um, worker there get his own room, or are they in some big dormitory? How does that work? Uh, well, it, it is a dormitory style of, of life. Um, each cabin uh, has uh, two bunks, so there's two people to a room, and you've got um, a desk in the room, you've got uh, closet space, and of course you have your, your uh, bathroom facilities. You've got the shower and sink and so on. Hmm. Um, so how many, is it mostly guys that are out there? I'm, I'm guessing it's mostly men. No, no, actually there are quite a few women working here. 
Yeah, we've, we were surprised, actually, because we thought it would be mostly men working out here. But there are quite a few uh, women working here in, di in various jobs. Huh. Does that cause any trouble? Does any, or, is, or nobody's talking about that? No, I don't think so. And, I, and I'm honest when I say that everybody here really does appear to get along extremely well. Uh, and they like to refer to themselves as a family. And I guess that's pretty much the way you have to be uh, when you're spending such long periods of time together on an oil platform like this. You're right out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean here. Boy, almost in the middle of nowhere. I, it, must feel, it must feel, though, lonely at times. I mean, 21 days, even though you've got all the facilities in the world, you really are. You're just stuck in the middle of the ocean. Well, that's right, you know, but that's, I think that's a, a way of life that a lot of Newfoundlanders are pretty used to, uh, being away from their families, uh, being in, in places that they may not necessarily want to be, uh, but there's work there, and uh, the work has to be done, and uh, after, uh, you know, the three-week period, they get to go back home and be with their families for three weeks. It, you know, it'll, it'll, gotta, we've got to leave you now, but it'll be interesting to see if the kind of culture grows up around the oil platform that, that has around fishing. It'll be interesting to see if, if music comes out of it or tall tales, that kind of thing. I, well, knowing, knowing this province yeah. and, uh, and the people who live here, uh, I'd be very surprised if it didn't. Thank you, Carl. I, I envy you that visit. It, it sounds like a, just a fascinating place, at least to visit. It is. A, a, it's a lifetime. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm very excited to be here. And I'm glad I was able to come out. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 And that's it for Absolutely Canadian for today. I'm Ann Petrie in Calgary. I hope you can join us again tomorrow. Bye. Bye.